Welcome back, everybody. We are here in Career and Mission Growth today. I'm super excited. Another show where we can help you maximize your career results. The lady is with me today. I got to tell you about this before we introduce Tanya to the show. We've known each other like, seven or eight years now, and I've always thought about her as the queen of customer success and operational excellence inside organizations. And if you took a look at her profile, you will agree with me because she's done this in some of the largest organizations in the world. You know, and where has her success been? You know, one of the things that impressed me most about her was what not only was she able to stand on stage and do some public speaking, but the way in which she was able to connect to an audience with candor and transparency, but also say the hard stuff that sometimes we all need to hear. I have a lot of respect for that. <laughs> so wow, that's thank you. Tanya in a nutshell. Thank you for joining us. It's really good to see you again. So I'm super excited to have this conversation and find out how we can help people maximize their careers. How are you doing? I'm doing well. First off, um, feel very grateful for the intro. That was really nice things you 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 said. So I'll make sure to send the money in the mail. And <laughs> number two, um, you you talked about public speaking, and I have a trick for public speaking. Um, I always wear solid black or gray, and then I wear red shoes, and I tell people they're paying more attention to my shoes than what I'm saying. And so that way it doesn't matter what I say or if I make a mistake and then everybody laughs and they start paying attention to my red shoes the rest of my conversation. It's fantastic. It's a good I trick up my yeah. sleeve. I, and, and then anyone who doesn't know, um, I, I love that because it fits in my model of when you present power dress, you have to go and figure out what it looks like to exude power and having red shoes nails it. So that's a really, really uh, good tip. All right, so look, we, we want to help people here. And I thought having you on the show, one of the biggest benefits I thought we would have is taking a, a conversation, a walkthrough here for people who might be extremely valuable individual contributors, people who maybe are in middle management, people who've got to maybe that director tier, and just helping them maximize their results after that. So if there's something in your career that you're looking for about recognition and reward if if you if you're chasing titles that's one thing if you're chasing money that's another thing i th i think tanya and i we've built our careers based on contribution and impact and i would advise you to be thinking about that how much more contribution inside the organizations you can make so let's start there okay, i, I want to kind of talk, talk a little bit about your secrets of success so what, why don't you talk to us a little bit about if you can think back to that time when you're going from individual contributor to into a management role what do you think were the kind of one or two things that made the biggest difference for you? Ooh, good question. Um, I think there's, if, if it's okay with you, I'm going to say three. I think there's three things. So I it's think- okay. the, It's definitely okay with me. And now everyone watching is like, yeah, we'll, we'll take three. <laughs> You'll take three. That's yeah. better than two. I always have this thing that people always remember things in three. But um, so the first one would be definitely hardworking. Right. So you have to show up, you have to deliver results and you have to be, you know, one of the hardest people working in the room. So hard work goes without saying um, the second one would be people have to want to work with you. So this is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated for some. Right. So now you're more focused a little bit, not just on am I performing and, and am I delivering results, but do people want to work with me? Am I a team player? Right. Um, and then the last one is having an advocate for you um, that is above you. And so when I was an individual contributor, I thought, here's my first mistake in my career. And I have tons of them. So I'll probably talk more about the mistakes I've made than right. I, I will good. the successes. But the biggest mistake I made as an individual contributor was thinking that hard work would get me the promotion. And that is not true in isolation. It gets you noticed but it definitely doesn't get you your promotion. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that because at the hardest times I ever worked, if I was doing the, you know, coming in well before 8 a.m. in the morning and then making sure I was the last one to leave, it's because my strategy was be seen the whole day by everybody. Yeah, that that was not what got me promoted. You know, putting in <laughs> more time, more set, sweat equity. Yeah, I, I learned really quickly that the second two things you said I think are definitely much more valuable is that if people didn't know me, uh, they tended not to like me. <laughs> so, cause they didn't have a relationship. Right. So I think that's about right. relationships and maybe we'll talk about that. And then the second one you said there about, you know, who is looking out for you? Who's your sponsor? Who's your mentor? 
and most importantly, you know, how have you, what are your strategies and your operational tactics are for how you build those relationships with those people? So yeah. because those two are t tend to be more less about the individual and what you can put in, they're actually more about how can you go and get data and people to support you? Perhaps explain then for, for those folks watching, and then you can use mistakes as well, things you didn't do this very well, because I, I remember <laughs> doing, not doing this well at all. Yeah. Uh, what's their what's their little you know recipe of success here how do they get to the point where people want to work with them how do they get to the point where there is an advocate who says i'm on team tanya she's coming yeah. well i think for the second one the relationship one the people want to work with you um i don't know if you've ever read the book go giver but I think it, oh, you have? Okay, yeah. so I love that book, right? Stratospheric, Stratospheric Success. And it really talks about karma ultimately, right? That you you have to have genuine, the you have to have others' um, best interests at heart from a genuine perspective and you have to be a servant leader, right? And so in my younger career, mistake number two, it was all about me. Um, it was all about what I'm going to get. How am I going to promote? Wow. Right. Well, look at me, look at me. I was the show. And then I had to pivot and learn very quickly that it has actually nothing to do with me. And that great leadership is all about others and how you serve them and have their best interests at heart. Um, and then they do want to work with you. They're they're you're, you become magnetic. People will follow you. They will do anything for you. Right. And support you. And it's vice versa. So I think, and then on the uh, advocate, um, this one, I think I learned later in my career a little bit as I was kind of making that bridge from more of the director and into the higher executive leadership role was really being um, strategic about your mentors and not just one, not just two. Oh, and by the way, they don't come to you. You have to go to them That's and right. really taking that into my career. Yeah like owning my career and making a plan and being very specific about who I reach out to, who I spend time with and who I'm going to listen to for advice. Yeah. I, I, when we worked in the same company, I did exactly that. I was very, very careful about, you know, single shot, pick out the people who are well connected in the organization, are well connected to the high profile projects and move closer to that. But they'll also get their advisory on how do I move myself through the organization and almost always they were saying it was through relationships and how deep and broad is your network here and i think that's a really good value and you also yeah we were talking about the relationships yeah i, I think one thing i left bodies by the side of the road i've even had a, a note from somebody in the last two years who basically said to me do you know you were like one of the most horrible people i've ever met in my life oh no way <laughs> and, and i i go I remember, yes, I was that person, which is why I do what I do is what I do now is to pay back and take that massive mistake of, of sometimes, you know, not really caring about other people because I was so focused on myself right. that that actually, that, that brand goes with me, you know, so that individual's out there telling everybody, hey, you want to stay clear of James, but it, I've been able to switch it by doing what you're saying, which is this, what's in it for them. Yeah. When every conversation, yeah. thinking about somebody on the other side of the conversation, yep. you'll do you'll go much, much further by being interested in them and asking questions about them than you'll ever do telling them about what your achievements and your accomplishments are. Yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. I like that. Okay. So then let's 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 switch to mistakes. So let's talk a little bit. And I, I like the I was you, like, I thought you, we were already on mistakes, James. No, what well, are you talking we, about? I've already given you two. But yeah, let's keep them going. I like to dish okay, yeah. out my mistakes. I, I want I want it because here's what I'm seeing, right? I, I'm I'm talking to people who've got all the talent, all the gift, all the capability, all the education, all the resources in the world. You know, they they there's no shortage of opportunity in front of them. But I sometimes, and I even had text exchanges with client with an ex client today, who basically said, "I'm not taking any action." And so, tell us a little bit about that. You know, what are the mistakes that you're seeing? Because you, you know, I I know that you care deeply about your own people, but you also care about the contribution. You know, the contribution that everybody makes inside the organization. So, what what do you see as common mistakes that people are making, and they don't think they are mistakes? but they, wow. need to, they need to hear it directly from you. 
Oh, that's a great one. Um, so it's, I think it varies depending on the level somebody's in right within the organization. So if I'm going kind of at that middle management leadership level, I would say the first is, um, all they care about and they make it very known is when are they going to get promoted or when are they going to get their next pay raise, right? And so their brand becomes unintentionally um, very, people will start to think they're very self-centered, right? That they don't care about the large organization or the enterprise as a whole. So I think um, I see that a lot. It's just about being self-aware of how you're coming off. Even if those are very important things, I care about how, you know, how I'm, how much money I'm getting paid. Is it worth my value? Am I promoting? Am I in the position that is, um, that is at the level that I think my value contributions are right. Those are all, they're, they're okay. And they're fine. It's a matter of how you're promoting them and how you're showing up at work with them. So I think the biggest mistake I see at that level is that's kind of what, okay, so I did this. Is this, do I get a promotion now? Like, do I get the raise now? Do I? So it's really that art of trying to understand when is the right time to bring those things up? Do you have the advocate? Do you have your um, situation completely well-prepared, right? And do you need to announce it? And then the second one is, and I see this all the time, and I don't know, I think this is just because we're human, James, and you might agree with me, you might not, but I've seen in every organization I've been at in at every level. Um, and, but it's the one thing I'm constantly addressing and it's office place gossip back channeling. Um, and I think it's also what creates some of the more toxic environments that make us want to leave the corporate culture, right? Is that we allow it. And I even saw, um, on LinkedIn one time, somebody said, and they left something that stuck with me, which was um, even as a leader, if you entertain gossip as input, right, you're enabling the culture of gossiping. So those would be the two things is just how you're really showing up around what you think you deserve or you have earned, like how you show up with that. And then the second one would be workplace gossip. Those are the mistakes I constantly see and that yeah. I'm correcting to at every level of the organization up to the highest of the highs. I'll talk about that and then step back into some other things you said. Yeah. For those watching, if, if you haven't figured this out yet, gossip is what binds all humans together. Mm. So it's an essential communication model that means that we can all understand the world in a similar way. But it's actually something that is a massive impedance to your progression, because if you're involved in gossip and complaint and judgment of others, uh, you're not hanging around in growth and progressive groups. You're hanging out around in declining groups. And I always say to my clients, and, and, and this is a, something I've, I've picked up along the way, I don't know who told me this. If you're the most ambitious person in your close circle of professional and personal colleagues, of, let's say 20 people, you're in the wrong group. And it's likely <laughs> that when you go to dinner, it's likely when you meet, gossip is present. Yeah. That's because your ambition has outstripped them. So you may have grown beyond them. Yeah, so I, I agree with you. <laughs> I think, I, I think. look, who, who's not guilty of gossip in their career? Yes, this guy, extremely guilty of entertaining that. And then recognizing that, you know, it's not even okay to dip your toe in, uh, but it took me a long time to step away from that and not be involved in it. And also to shut it down when it comes to, used to come to my office a lot. Hey, you know, Jackie said this, I don't care about Jackie. You know, you're giving this too much meaning. Let's talk about professionally how we can handle the situation. And you're talking there about, you were talking there about difficult, difficult conversations. I, I want to kind of applaud you because one of the things I saw you do really well is that transition to servant leadership where you take your cloak off you're kind of describing this most people want to wear that superhero cape and they want to be they want to be the best thing since sliced bread but yeah. actually the best thing of since sliced bread is to be a guide and is, is to serve other people and stop thinking about how can I get from this world and what can I give and what can world. I give mm -hmm. yeah. I agree Yep. I want to, I yep. want to well touch said. on, yeah, I want to touch on that. You, you were 
talking a little bit there about the difficult conversations, because this is another place where I think you've built a brand for yourself to be candid with people, to tell them the hard stuff. I said that earlier. Tell us a little bit about, because there's going to be people watching this who are in organizations and just say, well, that's not our culture. You know, I don't, I don't know where you work, but <laughs> how do we navigate <laughs> that? So perhaps give, give them your two or three ideas about, you know, navigating uh, cu cultural difficulties. Uh, sometimes people call it politics, you know, um, maybe it's yes. politics, you know, and then navigating you, politics. You yes, about, yes, yes. You know, this, I call it triangling. What you're saying is the back channeling. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps you've got a framework or a, a one or two step success model for how does somebody navigate that? Because I, I do think that is prevalent everywhere because of this gossip communication model. Yeah, I and I love how you how you opened it up, James. That it's like a universal language, and yeah. it is as humans. And I still have to stop myself sometimes and be self aware of wait, is that providing value? So that's the first question: oh, is the good. conversation that you're in right now is that providing value and any sort of positive impact in some way? And I think when you start to ask yourself that question, you feel it internally. And the question is, do you listen or, or do you listen and you stop and you shut it down or do you continue? And everybody can give themselves a million reasons and justifications and excuses to continue. But the true courage, in my opinion, comes from not only shutting it down, but not engaging and trying to help others to see that the approach they're taking is not providing value. Yeah. That is so positive so intent. So good. Yeah. I, I remember hearing Deepak Chopra say, whether you, you know, you're a supporter of Deepak or not, uh, there's just this wonderful phrase. If what you're about to say isn't helpful, <laughs> just don't just don't say it. And most yeah. people don't realize they're engaged. Most people don't realize they're engaging in gossip when they are being a news reporter. So they may come to you. So I may say, yes. Tanya, did you hear about? That's it. You're already into gossip. So it may not feel you're already gossip, there, but your assessment and your reporting of the news is gossip. That's why the news yep. is so damaging because so much of it is so negative, but it's all gossip. Is it, we, it is. we don't know how much fact is in there. We And we've spent the last 10 years and then we've been reminded by administration that most of this could be fake, you know? So yeah, <laughs> asking ourselves. Um, totally. <laughs> That's great. But, and, yeah, so, and I love that you said that. I love that you said that. Is, and as a leader, though, James, the one thing I want to touch on as a leader, and I mentioned the comment that when you entertain input, right? Like, hey, that's yeah. feedback. So I've I've worked for leaders, I've seen leaders who who they'll have peers of mine or the people below me around their peers, right? They'll come and say, you know, they'll start to administer a problem. And the first thing I do every time to make sure it's not gossip is, did you talk to that person? Then don't come to me. I don't want to hear it until you've talked to that yeah. person first and you try to work it out. I can coach you on how to address it. I can help give you guidance and tips, but I'm not going to entertain your input about that person until you've tried to address it. And that I think would stop workplace gossip in my opinion and the back channel right. if every leader would do that and force people to work together and to figure it out because we can we have good intent stop it yeah. just stop your question's awesome did, did you talk to that person because most of the reaction that's going on in the workplace is to an email mm. that's not a good way to communicate <laughs> i don't think email was designed for communication it was designed for right. clarification and you're clarifying yeah. something we already talked about if we go back to the beginning of email i just spoke to my good friend this morning uh, charlene and she was telling me yeah can you imagine it in mail as it was called at the time you know now linkedin stole that but email just happened inside companies because there was no network you know you couldn't connect email to email Right. And before that, we were we were running pieces of paper from pigeonhole to pigeonhole. But before well, that, do you remember the yellow Manila envelopes for absolutely. inner office memos? Yeah. Sorry. But we evolved to this point where we're using email as communication, but that's that's a really bad model. So I yeah. agree with you. I think yeah, people stop using email that way. And if something's re you're causing a reaction, know that you own the reaction. It's not the other person. That's the first thing. But. Oh. Look Good at one. your messaging and your text messaging and your phone and your ability to see somebody face to face as methods for solving the conversation and the conflict. Yeah, I think that's 
Yeah, I, I ask all my clients, did you did you phone? Did you leave a voicemail? And they always say no. And I say, then what yeah. are we talking about? You, you haven't <laughs> had the conversation yet. You know? Right. Conversation. Going back to yeah. people have to want to work with you. Relationships. You have to invest in it. And gossiping will be the first thing, right? And not picking up the phone, not having that conversation and resolving those those conflicts and allowing it to fester. All right. I, yeah. want, I, want, to move, I want to move right along because I, I know we're, yeah, let's go. We're, we're under a little bit of time. So let me ask you this. Can you pinpoint for career climbers now? We're talking about people who've got aspiration, ambition to be a role model for their families, to set the standard and demonstrate that they can bring that impact, deliver that value. What, what do you think was, there was a moment in your career, sometimes people call these green dots. You can look back and trace all the things that happened. The one where you went, that mistake, when I corrected it, is the thing that made the biggest difference. Do you have an idea what that might look like for you? Oh, I do, actually. It was at Experian when we worked together, actually. So um, you can edit that out if I wasn't supposed to say that. But, well, it depends um, what you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, if it's, it's about, good. If it's about you. So look, yeah, you know, we might leave that in. It's about me and it's good. Yeah, it's we, might good. Leave, we might leave that in if it's about you. If it's about, because, you know, we don't want this to be a blanket statement about oh, the company. for sure. No, no, no. It was great. But I, the moment I won't forget, and I'll leave names out of it, but it was great. I um. I was a director for a really long time. I was working really hard to get to that VP status, right? And finally, I had a mentor of mine. Um, she happened to sit in HR and she sat me down and I just said, like, what am I doing wrong? Right? Like, I've got really good performance. And I, think I know who I think I know who that was. <laughs> <laughs> you probably do. She's still a mentor of mine. Um and she sat me down and that's where my three things that we touched on earlier came from. And what I realized is I had a lot of advocates actually uh, um, for that were above me, but I didn't have the right advocates. And she helped me quickly understand that if you really want to advance, like the high, like especially once you get to the VP and above, and you know this, but especially once you get there, um, the game changes and it just gets a little bit more complex. And it's not it's not dependent purely on your performance or that people want to work for you or necessarily that you have advocates. Now it matters which advocates. And you touched on this earlier, right, in the conversation. And I needed to be a little bit more thoughtful and intentional about who those advocates were and how to address them. And so she gave me some great wisdom that we actually covered throughout this whole call. And I actually went and confronted somebody who was not an advocate of mine and um, was actually not helping and progress in my career. And that person gave me, we had a great conversation. We got everything out on the table um, and talked about, and here was the biggest lesson I learned that, man, I wish I would have, um, I wish I would have had the conversation sooner. Yeah. I will never forget. I'm like, so I've done this and this, and here's my performance. I've made you look good. I've made your clients look good, right? I, 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 and then she said, I'll never forget. She goes, yeah, but that's not what keeps me up at night. When did you ask me what I needed? And I went, oh, wait, what? And <laughs> so for me, <laughs> I was like, here, I thought I was doing all the right things, but they weren't of value to her and what she needed and what was keeping her up at night. And that was my mistake. Um, Helped me back in my career, helped me with, like, I couldn't figure out why I wasn't advancing and why I didn't have certain people in my corner. And then ultimately it came down. I wasn't managing the relationship and I wasn't worried about her and her intentions and how to give her. And ultimately it stopped me. And you, then I just explained the domino effect in under two minutes. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I, I, I like that. But you've kind of wrapped it up nicely is that we, we've been talking about this need for advocacy, need to build deep and broad relationships but now you've added a third element to that, which is in, in the advocacy, in those relationships, if you do not understand what is needed for the organization to make money, save money, or improve its efficiency or efficacy at getting results, you're going to find it really difficult. And, I, and I, I hear the stories all the time of the people who are deflated for not being promoted, not getting the pay raise. And then I ask that question, do you understand how you're contributing to make money? 
Do you know how much money you're saving? And do you know your percentage of efficiency that you're driving in the business? And often they can't answer the question. And that's okay. You need to go and talk to your leaders and figure out how do you contribute to that? Yeah. Yep. All right. Yep. I'm going to ask I you one that. more. I'm going to let you go, but I'm going to ask you one more thing before you do. Yeah. That is somewhere in this process, there was an advocate or a role model for you. It could be somebody famous, somebody dead, somebody living. It could be somebody we don't know. Is there, some, is there somebody who was in your corner the whole time? And then what was the biggest lesson that they taught you? Well, not to get too spiritual, but I would honestly, if you ask me that question, my very first one is going to be the big man upstairs. And that's okay. Um, that's he has led me through everything, through difficult conversations, tribal times. Um, but if I was to kind of back off the spiritual, I'm going to say I don't have one. I have um, a network of people that have helped me in different ways at different times that I still have relationships with. Um, and they're not always above me. There's a lot of people who have reported to me um, that teach me more than I could ever even yeah. teach them. Um, so I would have to say the big man and, or I actually have a network. I don't have one single and I don't have some, That's okay. you know, Dolly Mama or anything like that, that like really drives me every day, but yeah. If I'm being honest, it, le it leaves me to, I can close this out with this little message for everyone. And maybe this will be useful for you too. I, I encourage my clients to set two alarms every day. One of those alarms is the check-in with yourself mm. and spirituality. So if you are somebody of a person of faith and you believe in a God, whichever that God is for you, that is somewhere where you check that alarm every day. Just to, am I being me? Right. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And then have a second alarm in the day. And if you're fortunate to have a partner, be married, have kids, that second alarm should be typically set on the date of birth for that person. So it goes off. Uh, one of my clients uh, has a son, birthday's 20th of May. So on the 20th of May, for 5.20 every day, her alarm goes off. And that's a wow. check-in. I've already had my check-in for spirituality in my God. But the second one is, am I good? Am I being the best mom I can be? Am I being yeah. the best wife I can be? Sister, daughter, granddaughter. Am I being that role model? And and just having those two checks every day keeps you your head out of the, the craziness and the chaoticness of your career, which by the way, I don't even put next on the list. If you're going to have another <laughs> alarm, your, your next alarm is for your dream, your aspiration, mm -hmm. your ambition. Am I connected to that right now? Because some of us climb the ladder and go the wrong way. We talked about that. I think oh, we talked I get about it. The, yep, I'm hearing you. Mm -hmm. Some of us go in the wrong direction. Yeah, but our preamble was probably just as exciting to, as this conversation. Yeah. And then, and then only then after that is to start thinking about how am I doing at work? Yeah. And so the smart people amongst you will have noticed he didn't talk about friends. Yeah, because they come after that. Because yeah. you only- I would agree. Friends, you put your friends only above those things when they're paying you, when they pay your bills and they pay your livelihood and they take care of you, for <laughs> of your life, you put your friends where, above your work. But until then, yeah. you, your creator, your partner, your kids, check in with that and then check in with your ambition and your work and your aspirations. I love that. And then you can call your friends up and go out for dinner. <laughs> yep, I love that and the right priority. So I think that's great. I agree wholeheartedly. Well, look, Hey, everybody, if this is valuable, I want you to leave a comment in below. If you want to get Tanya back on the show, you need to tell us. So you need to send us a message and get us back on. If you leave a comment underneath, we will reply to you. And if you want to talk to one of us, you can do that too. And there will be no charge for that. We will have a conversation with you because our goal is to impact you, contribute to your career, make a difference. And that's what we uh, plan to do for you. So have a great day, everybody. I hope this has been useful. Tanya, thank you very much. We'll this was bye. great. Thanks, Thanks James. I appreciate it. Bye.